Good morning. I come to you uh, in this outdoors form. Uh, even though it's cold, so cold we had to cancel. Sadly, drive in church, which breaks my heart, um, especially after the positive uh, comments and feedback we got after last week. From people said, that the one that sticks out in my mind most is Joyce Johnson, who said, I just have this warm feeling. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the wonders of technology can't always give us that warm feeling. Uh, they haven't figured that out. Sometimes it can. Um, but there is something about meeting in physical space that is irreplaceable, maybe. So, uh, this will have to do. The reason I'm outside is not just because it's beautiful, cold but beautiful. Oh, here's some lilacs that are about to bloom. Oh, here's some that are already blooming. Yeah. Don't you wish you could be smelling those? Sorry. Uh, they're pretty, pretty great. Um, so, uh, the reason I'm out here is because my amazing wife is inside with the kids who um, are producing an exquisite three-part harmony of uh, screams and cries uh, right now. Kind of a motet of uh, childhood anguish. <laughs> but, uh, which, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want you to be um, distracted by that, or really me. So thanks for bearing with us. Uh, but happy Mother's Day, first of all, uh, to those who, to whom it applies, but also to everyone. I wanted to just offer a few brief uh, scriptural reflections and then my own about uh, how Mother's Day might relate to the love of God. Uh, I'm going to read from few passages. Now, something I've mentioned before in church, and um, maybe many of you know this already, but some people might not, is that the, uh, <clears throat> you know, predominant images we get from a lot of Christian and, and Jewish imagery of God is um, masculine. You know, God is referred to as he, and uh, Jesus talks about God as father or papa, some people think is more accurate, <clears throat> but the Bible also has um, some gorgeous and powerful images of God um, as a woman and God as a mother. And this is even more remarkable that it emerged in um, a patriarchal culture that did have a dominant image of God as man that still these images uh, were deemed so important that they rose to the surface and are kept as part of our, of our scriptural canon. A lot of the best ones come from the uh, Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. So there are images that we might expect um, when we think about mothering love for God, like um, Isaiah 66, 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. So uh, that's a beautiful image, um, a simile that God is referring to God's self as a mother comforting um, her child. Uh, but maybe not surprising, we tend to think of mothering love as kind of nurturing, comforting, warm, enveloping. Um, but how about this one from Hosea? Chapter 13, verse 8. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and tear them asunder. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and tear them asunder. God is talking about the enemies of uh, Israel, um, of the Jewish people. And uh, that's, you know, something we know about mother bears is that they can be fierce. Um, but mother, human mothers can be like that too, that... The other side of this nurturing love is a fierce protectiveness um, that is uh, not just passive, not just kind of meek, but also active and powerful and um, forceful. So it even challenges a little bit our 
uh, our assumptions of what counts as feminine or masculine love. Um, and I think that's something really important about God is even though our tradition tends to use uh, male pronouns for God, you know, just like unfortunately a lot of our languages, you know, I remember learning French and the generic uh, pronoun they use is a masculine pronoun, same with in Spanish. So we have to recognize where, you know, these traditions come from, but also see within them how they challenge um, our assumptions about what womanhood is, what motherhood is, what fatherhood is, and that they're not just these two radically separate things, um, that maybe a fullness of God includes both. Here's from the New Testament. This one's really beautiful. It's in both Matthew and Luke. Matthew 23, verse 37, and Luke chapter 13, verse 34. This is Jesus. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Let me say it again. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And that one's funny. Uh, Allison said I could make fun of her because uh, I really want to get chickens, um, baby chicks. A uh, little survivalist instinct, you know, we, we need food in the in case of even more food shortages. <laughs> um, but also I think it'd be fun and cute for the kids, but she is uh, not so into the idea. So um, ironically, uh, the mother hen doesn't want any hens. But the uh, but this is a also a beautiful image of protection of God's um, kind of gathering in God's um, sheltering, protecting love uh, that draws from images of motherhood. Now I um, am in nature, which is uh, something I love, something really important to me and something I know is important to a lot of folks at our church. Um, we uh, are very blessed and fortunate that in this time of kind of shutdown, we have um, a little bit of woods <laughs> to walk around in. Um, studies show that stress levels drop when we're in nature, especially green spaces. Um, they've measured this, but we've probably experienced it. And I'm, I'm fortunate, one of, the, one of the things that I've received as a gift from my mother, um, hi mom, happy Mother's Day if you're watching, uh, is a love for nature. I remember family trips up north. Uh, we're wondering if we're gonna be able to take one this summer, possibly up to the North Shore and um, seeing my mom uh, just be so happy and so at peace. Um, if we were on a hike um, up the Split Rock River or on our secret family beach. <laughs> it wasn't our beach, it was a public beach, but kind of hard to find. Um, just some of the images I have of my mother at her most um, alive and content are in nature. Um, and uh, incidentally, my mom grew up uh, on a little bit of land in the country um, with chickens. <laughs> um, but I've also got, I've, you know, I can think of so many um, gifts that my mother has given me like that. Um, a love for art, for creativity, um, love for good food. She's an amazing cook. Um, but more than these specific gifts, uh, I think what my mother gave me is something harder to pinpoint, harder to describe, um, but that gets at what uh, the Bible is trying to communicate with its motherly images of God, um, which is a, just a sense of um, being surrounded, being held, um, being seen, um, and being accepted. And that's something that 
none of us should take for granted. Um, I know that it's, I'm fortunate that I had a mother like that. Not everyone has a mother. Um, it seems like a universal phenomenon, but, um, and not everyone's um, fortunate enough to have had um, a good enough mother. Um, and I think we need to acknowledge that and not um, just sort of lazily escape into sentimentalism about Mother's Day. That for some people, it might bring up other kinds of feelings, difficult feelings, um, maybe feelings of loss of a great mother. Um, but nonetheless, even if that mother love wasn't there in the way it needed to be, we can recognize that kind of love is something we need. And that kind of love is something that can come from different places. Um, that love, though, is so strong um, when we can find it. <laughs> Maybe we find it um, when we retreat to a quiet place in nature with ourselves, but it's not coming from Mother Nature. Uh, that's That would be theologically problematic. Um, nature is beautiful. It's a creation of God, but it's not God, God's self. God made nature. Um, nature is also a place of, um, of struggle and violence. God's love is, um, is constant and um, reliable. <laughs> um, at this time, we're reminded of how nature can be unreliable or threatening. Um, nature's fertility and nature's uh, fecundity also makes viruses that kill and bring pain and suffering. So Mother Nature is a little bit of a uh, misnomer, um, more like a, uh, mean stepmother nature? No. <laughs> uh, that's for another day, why evil stepmothers are such a fixture in myth. But um, that, that mother love that we need is so uh, important that when we feel it threatened or taken away, the way we respond uh, is um, by shutting ourselves off. So there's a, a story my mom loved to tell when I was younger. Um, that after my younger sister Amy was born, I was maybe almost three years old, uh, you know, like a lot of kids, I saw this in my own family, there's this confusing time of like, wait, is my, is my share of love diminished? Do I, am I going to get the attention and love that I used to have? Uh, it seems like, no, this new baby everyone's excited about is you know, stealing the show. So my mom tells a story that after my sister Amy was born, I um, constructed this elaborate um, fortress, this fort I called it, out of uh, little kid chairs and pillows and I don't know what else, toys. And I said it was my fort and no one else could come in to my fort, not even mommy. And I sat there and I was mad, leave me alone, but look at me, you know? <laughs> and uh, my mom, uh, you know, is an artist, she's an art teacher, and she has a sketch of this fort. And she, I, I've seen the sketch, um, and I, I wish I had it, uh, but uh, it's of me and my fort, and she's subtitled it, The Fortress of Solitude. And, you know, that's what we do when we uh, feel that love that we need so deeply, that care, the protection, that protection, that, that seeing, um, when we feel that it might be threatened or taken away, we try to build these little, our own fortresses of solitude. Um, usually we're not aware of it. Um, Usually we do it kind of slowly and gradually, maybe subtly, but we kind of try to protect ourselves. And that might work for a while, but in the long run, it's a losing game. Um, those fortresses keep others out. 
those fortresses in trying to um, give us protection, shut out the love we might get from new people in our lives, from relationships, from God. <laughs> um, we need to let that love in. Um, we need to take the risk of letting that love in in order to reconnect with it. So, happy Mother's Day. Um, my prayer for all of you uh, in this wild time is that you find time and ways to connect with that love that is just there. That love that um, is constant, is reliable, um, is mysterious, <laughs> um, but it's at the core of all things. And it's from God. Amen. Oh look, there just happens to be a, a bell in the woods here. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Now when I was in my experimental church in uh, Chicago, Root and Branch, I, I did a little modified version of the Lord's Prayer I want to share with you um, right now. I think it's true to the spirit of the gospel and the scriptures. Our Father, our Mother, our Father, our Other, who art in heaven, whose heart is hidden, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Um, I can't wait to see you all again at Drive-In Church next week. Um, let us also uh, keep in our prayers, keep in our hearts um, one another. Uh, let's pray for all those who are um, putting themselves and their families possibly at risk, taking care of uh, sick folks right now. Um, let's pray for uh, people who are um, struggling financially. Um, and let's uh, give thanks. Um, that in the midst of all of this, um, we have reason to be hopeful. We have reason to uh, stay one, stay connected, united, um, and stay uh, in love. Amen. <laughs>